this week we have a run to the line in race A. Race B sees many victims of the chicane of death. And in race C we have the big one. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gran Turismo Weekly Race Guide here in 2022. It's week 36 and this week we have some good racing action, some uh, deaths and chic the chicane of death it really is a death. And then we have this kart race which is, well, well yeah, it's also death. Right, let's have a look at the race details for this kart race then. We're racing 12 laps and we're at Lego Majore. Of course we are. But it's the east end. It's a good start with the false start check. Sports soft tyres. That's one fuel and tyre wear and the bot is on the medium. Not that it really matters in the car because it's all about survival. Because this car wants to kill you at every moment you hit the brakes. So, let's jump into this race then. Actually, no, 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 no. Just stop. We're rushing. I'm stamped. They're in the background for you. You want to jump to race B or race C? You can do that now. Unless you're watching the premiere. Ha ha. Right, let's go to the race then. Let's have a look at exactly what happens because, yeah, I try and survive in the cart. Here we are then at the start in a cart. Yes, we're a poet and you didn't even know it. We can do the runs and do the crimes. Right, we've got a full start check here. Let's make sure we don't make this a three and four as we get ready for the start. This is a long, long wait. Oh, yeah, we've uh, jumped it. Of course we have. Uh, now we've got the sweet dad jumping it more than I did. So at least I'm not the worst of the starters as we go into this left for the first time then. Side by side with Lion at sea, possibly from Scotland. Possibly not. I have no idea. As we then head into this right hander. <laughs> Sparks going for the backwards entry into that turn there. Well played, Sparks. Well played indeed. Now we're side by side here. Oh, we catch it. We catch it. And there is the Swede. The Swede went to the back and now in towards the front again there is Aka Bubba. As it will leave that car. Oh, bit of overstay. Oh, we've got somebody else dying there. That's AA1. We're up into P8. No, P7. Apologies. P7 after all of that. As we head down towards this last corner, Sparks there saying, I'm fast. Thank you, Sparks. I'm not that fast. As we go into this right-hander then. We've got Jordan there, which is uh, Jordier's Gran Turismo teammate, I'm going to say. Um, as we continue on into the cursed position and heading towards this section then. And we just start to understeer. Look at that understeer. Oh, that understeer is horrendous, man. We do not want that understeer. Anyway, we survive and come into here again. And we have a few deaths going on there. The Swede far left. Uh, exit stage left, as you did. Uh, but we're continuing on out of there, and we're in P. So, a little bit of oversteer. Got Lexus with a penalty up there. We've got Battling for P5. I think that's who's up. We've got Craig in there. Goes a bit too deep. Me on the inside of Craig. Alexis goes off. And we're going to be into P5. P5, ladies and gentlemen. And we continue on then trying to attack Husa. Husa, that? Uh, is that from Madagascar? Husa? I can't remember. Anyway. Heading towards this right-hander then. And this is the hard one. And we actually get it right this time. A little bit of a bump there, which does send you right. Well, there we go. Who's that going round? Up into P4 we go. Let's catch up to Jardier's Gran Turismo brother, Jada. Jada. Let's go, Jada. In towards the right-hander then. And we're just trying to keep this balance like, sorry, through the corner as fast as we can. We do that very nicely, actually. We're going to go around the outside of Jada then. And that is us up into a podium position. Happy days indeed. Now we advance a bit further on here. Lion has got past Jada in the advancement. And as we come into here, we're just getting ready for the braking zone. Went a bit deep there into turn one. And then go on the brakes. And the car goes left. We exit stage left. Unfortunately, that means Lion goes past us. And Jada there just leaves enough of a car size gap. Thank you, Jada. That is much appreciated. As we continue on through there, with a bit of oversteer, of course, because the bumps really do not help. So coming in through this right hander then. And we're still in this fight with Jardar then. We're having a really good fight here with the Czech driver. I'm pretty sure that's the Czech flag. Apologies if it's not. As uh, so we head down towards the corner. Look how close that we are indeed. I'm trying to give it room here. Keep it on the real outside line to gain enough speed. But we touch the grass, which isn't good. Low Jada touches the sausage, which is a tiny bit worse, in my opinion. Do not touch the sausage. Sausage is nasty. Right, anyway, time for a lap guide, I will say. So we continue on. So come into here, just chuck it in. You lift a little bit if you start to understeer. Otherwise, you should be able to do it flat. Just be careful as you go through here with the bumps. And then in towards this braking zone, you're braking before the curb starts. You see how I'm going to straight line this all the way to the corner now? Do not be turning left or right because the minute you hit the brakes or the second you hit the brakes, you'll go spinning like Sparks did, like so I did as well. And then you want to open the steering as much as possible to avoid that bump. This bump here, very scary as well. You want to be in a straight line with the cart. Keep your steering straight and you will be fine. Now on the right-hand side, you have an orange barrier that goes into a green one. 
On the end of that orange barrier, that is your marker here. You want to break and drop to fourth gear. Chuck it in. You want to clip the curb a little bit here. Accelerate through the corner. Up to fifth before the bump. And hopefully you don't oversteer. Not as much as that. And uh, you can actually oversteer a lot more than that as well. So just be careful. All right, we're chasing Lionessi down here. As you head down towards this corner, you're actually breaking ridiculously late. That N2O. It reminds me of the NWO. N2O, as that sign hits to the left-hand side of your screen, rather than breaking hard, you're going to break it about 50%-ish. And you should be fine. And as you come into here, it bounces the car very nicely. You can accelerate through here. Don't worry about the understeer. It will come back to you. I'm going to have a good run on Lionessi. Then as you head towards the line, who's getting P3? It is... Lionessi, well played, Lionessi. You kept that just there. Brilliant, brilliant close race with Lionessi there. Congratulations to Bob. And uh, yeah, an interesting race. There will be carnage in this race, but there's no DR or SR update. So try it if you like the carts. Otherwise, just ignore it. And let's head to that all important race B. Welcome then to Dragon Trail Seaside. But this time, rather than going forward like we would normally do, we're doing it in reverse, which, as you know, is one of my favored layouts or favorite layouts or favored, whatever you want to call it, because. The reverse layout allows for a bit more overtaking and some more unique corners. And I like unique corners, as you know. Now, we're in group three, which you can see. Let's have a look at the race details, first of all. We're racing four laps here at Dragon Trail Seaside in reverse. It's a rolling start, but we've got a big, long straight for you to start on. Racing the hard tyres, which is a bit rubbish, I know. Times one, two, uh, times one fuel and tyre wear. And it's group three with a medium speed bot. We haven't got any differences with the bot yet, but hopefully that will be soon. So, we picked the Supra because the Supra is quite good here. It's bounced through the chicane. However, that chicane, the death chicane, you are going to have to be exceptionally careful because damage now in this update is very easy to get. And trust me, that death chicane really is death. Let's jump to the race then. Let's see how many people get murdered. Here we are then at the start. So, lots of people in Supra. It's got the Porsche in there. The Porsche was quite high in the time trials. And we've also got TCR Geriatric in here as well. Shout out to you and thank you so much again for your support with the gifted memberships at the weekend. My word, honestly, big, big thank you. All right, we kick off on this long straight that I talked about in the intro to this race, and we head into turn one then. We've got Quilladella 13 there, going a little bit wide in the old Ford Mustang. Oh, hey, bit of oversteer there. Be careful of that, actually, in this car. This car does like to spin its wheels in second gear. Be very, very, very careful. All right, we're going to head towards the death chicane, or chicane of death. For the first time of four then, in we go. Flip to the left and the right. And that's one death there. I think we've got somebody else a, a bit slow on the old power there. That's original C. We do slow down enough here. It just go a bit left here. And then I think the Italian does end up in the barriers in the end. That wasn't really my fault. I was just stuck there and movements, etc. We get a position. Jerry Artrick, unfortunately, I think, has engine damage as well. That's another position. Sorry to see that, Jerry Artrick. Hopefully you had a bit better race later on as we catch up to Goo here in the German Supra. In fact, it's got the German colours on there as well as we go through this right-hander then. What can we do versus the German? As up ahead, we've got the Spaniard there going quite slow as well. They've had a bit of an issue, so we're going to go past them. That's another position gained. As we look down the inside, they did break a bit early, and I think I probably should have gone for that move, but I backed out of it for now. As we continued on through there then. So we gained quite a few positions this first lap. We survived the chicane of death. And we're in a fight for P7, so not too bad for the first lap. Although we go into the back of the German, so I completely back out. This is enough room here for me to completely back out. Let them go, because that was my fault. Now, what I'm also going to do, just to, you know, make sure we get back into the battle we were in, I'm going to actually bump draft them just once here, so that they are now up to speed, and now we can get on with the fighting again. So, apologies for that little contact, but it's how you deal with that, and I'm dealing with it as far as I believe. So, in towards turn one, we go down the inside of the German then, and we do make that apex, really keeping it tight here. Through we go. As we accelerate out there, the German just got into the back of the air. There was enough room for a Supra on that right-hand side. Uh, but but uh, we've got a bump draft instead, so thank you very much. We continue on towards the chicane of death. Very scary to do here. Going into it. Woohoo! That was close, wasn't it? My word, that was close. But we make it. We made it work as we go through here. We've survived two laps now. We've got two more to go. Into towards that break-in zone. I'm about to say purple, but obviously it would be lap two. We go a bit deep here. The car didn't want to stop at all there. And Goo managed to get that position. Well played, Goo. As we continue on then. So we catch up to this pack where Goo's overtaken them all. We haven't. Going to hit. We follow the beetle into the barrier. And look at the damage. The front. The engine damage. We are going so slowly here. I'm staying towards the right side to avoid any... Well, penalizing anybody there. As the Spaniard goes through, the Greek actually lets me go there. So I get another position. Although, I decide to go off the circuit because, uh, hey, I decided to gift it back, apparently. 
Anyway, we leave that corner and we're, we're in an engine damaged drag race. How fast is the beetle with engine damage versus the Supra? Well, I can tell you now the Supra is far superior in every single way as you see us overtake the Greek driver. All right, we're going to go into a lap guide now in the final lap of the race. Head down towards turn one. You want to be braking before the start of the curb here. Now, normally it's just before, but because I've had slipstream and I'm right behind uh, in terms of the Ford Mustang. I mean, it's not close, but I've had the slipstream the entire time is what I mean. Um, I'm braking a bit before the curb, but that's not the curb. It really is the last of the late breakers. So brake just before it. You should be golden. Be careful on exit there in the Supra, second gear. So short shift to third to stop that oversteer and you should be fine. So head towards the chicane. Don't go too wide here into the chicane. Just after this 100 meter board or where the curb starts, but you can't see it here. So I'm showing you the 100 meter board instead. Um, you are going to brake a little bit and I go to fourth gear in the Supra. Now you want to clip the left and then really attack the right to avoid hitting that barrier on the left. Coming through here, really attack that curb and then get as far left as possible. If you're going for the overtake or far right, if you're going to go for the move. Now, this corner, very hard to get right. It's a beautiful corner, though. One of my favorite corners in Gran Turismo. The 100 meter board is your brake marker. Now, you can try and triangulate this off. So, you would brake, straight line brake, all the way to the outside and come back. I'm going for the move on the inside here. So, I'm keeping it tight, which, of course, means I've got to be careful on exit, which I was, but they sort of turned into me. So, it's just a little clash there, nothing major, and continue on through. It's a brilliant corner. Practice that corner. Lots of moves can be had there, but also lots of carnage with dive bombs. Heading down here, then you're sort of trying to slow down the car a little bit here. I have no marker or reference at the moment, GT7, for this one. And each time you get straight, you just dab the brake a little bit more and drop a gear. So it's fifth, fourth, third through those S's. Be careful of that as we continue over the crest of the hill, down towards this left hand, the downhill braking zone. The later you brake, the much further and much deeper you will go. So I'm braking just after the 100 meter board, just before the curb starts is the best place to break here and you want to clip the curb on the inside notice how the italian goes a bit too deep breaking that tiny bit too late downhill it really impacts your braking distance because it's just extended gravity helping you carry that momentum anyway we carry on up towards here then and the start of the curb on the right hand side is your final brake marker here um, you're braking just before it again similar to turn one however i've had no slipstream this time and it was compromised previously so i can break very much close to it Keep tight on the left. You want the best run for the right-hander here. You want to keep tight to have an open corner for this right. And it gives you the best run to the start-finish line as we use nitrous there to get towards the line. And that is it for race B. Now, you can have some good races, but I think the bigger issue in the room is the damage you will suffer from hitting the barrier at the chicane of death. It's good, by the way. I like it. It means you're really risking it if you do push, which is very, very nice. Well played, Gran Turismo. So if you want to chance, take your chances, play the lottery, put risk in there, take on the chicane of death, do daily race B. If you don't and you want a good old touring car race, do daily race C. Welcome then to Italy. We're at Sardinia. We're at road track A, but in reverse. It's all reverse this week, apparently. And then we have sparks going reverse in the go-kart. But even so, it is the reverse layout here at Sardinia A, which means it's the fast layout as well. And we are in the Alpha 155 again. It's the meta car of Group 4, as we know. A bit like when the Megan Trophy first got launched in GT Sport. And that was obviously it's a downgraded car. It was the meta as well. We're in the Alpha. Let's have a look at the race details and let's see what makes it such that it's the Alpha, the Beta, the Meta. It's 10 laps here at Sardinia. Road track A in reverse. It's a rolling star, but no need to worry there. Racing hard tyres, times two fuel, times five tyre wear. Not really impactful. And it is the group four on the medium bop. So that is what we're doing here at Sardinia layout A. I'd say the Alpha is the best, but it does mean some very close racing. And oh my word. Have I got a race for you. This one is a corker. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Here we are then at the start. I've seen mostly alphas. We do have a Subaru there. Oh, the Nico. Nico's in this. We've got Consta in there as well. I didn't even realize Consta was in this. And I saw him and I was like, it's like flashing my lights at him. Like, I'm going to hunt you down, Consta. I'm going to hunt you down. Uh, by the way, I'm friends with Consta, so don't worry. I'm not actually going to send him to the realms. Maybe I will, actually. I don't know. Who knows? We'll find out in the race. We're going to head towards turn one. Be careful at this corner. I was so scared first lap. Cold tyres, cold hard tyres. You don't have a lot of grip. Be careful because there are some realm entries into there. It's a bit like the chicane of death, to be honest with you. As we head towards turn one then. Line of stern in the Alpha 155. Now, remember what I said last week? And the car's easy to drive. It's close racing. I knew this one would be close. Look how close everybody is. Slipstream involved as well. If you look down the inside of Consta here, I'm having a sneaky move. But I, I sort of just broke a little bit later. And you'll notice my brake is even worse than it was. I need to recalibrate it again. Now, the first two races were fine because I did them after this race. Uh, so breaking into here, you can see that I've only got 95-ish percent. Uh, actually, my brake is only working 85% in reality. 
but it's already calibrated 10%. I don't know why my voice changed there. I believe so. We carry on after the French driver was in the barrier for some reason. Maybe they wanted a date. I don't know. Anyway, through this right-hander we go in towards this left. And we've got Dr. Cronus going a little bit deep there as we come into the here. We clip the right-hand curb. We accelerate out of that corner. And look at Consta. What a beautiful human. Thank you, Consta. It gives me slipstream. I love you, Consta. I'm not going to send you to the realm. R for M forever. No, actually, TCR. Join TCR if you want to. Check out the description. Uh, we'll try and keep it updated as best as we can. Yeah, we leave turn one on Scotty Senior 2 has uh, had it off somewhere because they're towards the right-hand side, which generally means engine damage. Uh, anyway, we carry on through here. I love that corner, by the way. It's so good. Uh, as we come through this left-hander then and heading towards the braking zone here. And we're in P13 at the moment. But we are very close to the lead, you know. 7.3 seconds isn't far away until you hit the barrier. Then it is far away. <laughs> uh, I have no idea why I understood like that. But even so, I have a marker for you later on, so you do not understand. Going through here, then a Spani gets it all sorts of wrong, trying to overtake Consta. Loses so much momentum there, does Ruben. Uh, we're going to look for the move into P12 then. They're still on my inside here, so I'm going to have to go around the outside of Turn 1. They leave me space, though. Fair play to Ruben, MC10. Uh, but we do get the job done. P12 for Tidge. Hey, not doing so bad here, folks. Not doing so bad at all. Uh, as we continue on. And up ahead, we've got a yellow flag. What's kicking off here then? Oh, got someone backwards there. Who's that? Oh, no! It's Mario Sonic! Sorry to see that, mate. We'll have a look at what happened to Mario Sonic. We'll have a look at some of the bloopers, of course, after this race. We've got TX3 underscore the Don. Uh, they've also had an issue, so I'm assuming they came together, potentially. I'm not too sure, uh, but that is a position gain for us and a position loss for them. But we've lost a little bit of time there because we've compromised on that fast right-hander. But can we catch up? Because that gap has come down towards the... Oh, we've got somebody else. Oh, it's an Italian. We've got Gatto Volante off there. Sorry if that actually is offensive to anybody, but I'm just reading what I see. And that is an Italian. Oh, so we're in P9 here. In fact, it's going to be P8 there. We've got Danny Lopez with a penalty. And we have Sparks up ahead, who we saw going reverse in race A. The mega, mega, mega reverse entry strat into turn one. Uh, it looked good. Didn't really have the best outcome, though. So, Sparks in the Michelin machine, then. We're only 5.7 seconds off the lead here, folks. Keep your eyes peeled. I did say this was a corker. Right, we're catching up to Sparks very quickly. So I had the choice here. Do I bump draft or do I go for it? So I decided to go for it. Got on the inside, easily alongside here. Going to come into turn one. I was hoping he would let off, but he didn't. So it's side-by-side -side action. I gave him enough room there, but unfortunately, Sparks hits the barrier. Heads to the realm. And actually, Sparks leaves there. Sorry to see that, Sparks. Uh, I was hoping you would uh, let off there and carry on. But even so, it's your choice. We can run side-by-side. -side. You saw we had enough room and... If that had worked out, my word, that would have looked good, Spark. So, fair play with the racing, all the same. Right, we're in P7 now, then. And look at that up ahead. That's a 5 to lead. Yes, we are 2.3 seconds. Oh, no, the Spark is into the barrier. Do not do that. Do not do that because it will cause carnage. In fact, uh, I haven't explained how to do that. But even so, it hit turn two, technically, the gap in the wall on the right-hand side. You're breaking just after that gap as uh, we enter the braking zone. I'll explain the first corner when we get back round as uh, we carry on through here. I got so excited by the Spaniard into the barrier. I say, you've got to be careful there. You really have to be careful. Right, heading up to this right-hander then. This is a good right-hander. You're turning before the end of that curb. You need to lift before it as well. Now, I've actually gone in and turned a tiny bit too late here because I'm only just going to have left the curb. If you turn a little bit earlier and then you could carry that same speed I did. I had to lift off a bit more there because I was going to understeer to the grass. I'll lose a little bit of time here. Now, as you head up to this left-hander, on the left-hand side, you've got the metal barrier that follows the orange and blue stuff. As that ends, you want to dab your brake a little bit. You can see I've just dabbed my brake here. If you go hard braking into here, you will spin. So you've got to slow down the car a little bit first, get it to the left, then hard braking in a straight line. Then go on the throttle, not all 100% because you will get oversteer, but like 50 to 75% on the throttle, your car will bounce and have the weight of the rear tires. Then you can go 100%. We've got Bill, Brian, and Steve here, the marshals. Brilliant brake markers here. They never move. They are amazing. They should be statues. But anyway, we're using them as brake markers here. We're going to drop to third gear and turn in. Now, I did say there was an acceleration marker. See that tree there with the white head on it or whatever it is, the bush? It is so obvious when you race, when you see that. Use that as your... Going on the throttle, basically. Going on the gas, as the Americans would say. When that gets in the middle of the screen, hit the gas pedal. Off you go. You will survive. As we head down towards this left-hander, and you see lots of action up ahead. We will get into that in a second. On the right-hand side, you have a tree. As the edge of that tree starts to hit the edge of your screen, you can see I'm about to go on the brakes now, or about touching the brakes. 
You're going to hit the brake pedal. Second gear here and get round. And you're going to short shift to third if you can. Clip that curb. Accelerate it through. Nice and easy. Job done. We are 1.2 seconds off the lead here, folks. We are going to be in a battle for the lead as we come into here. Then you're going to lift slightly here and then get towards the left-hand side. Dab the brake a little bit. But you're going to be hard braking, okay? Hard braking when you get in a straight line here. And before the end of that curb, you can see I'm doing nothing at the moment on the pedals. I'm going to hard brake very quickly. There we go. Second gear, clip the inside, it's right through the corner. Use a lot of that curb on the exit. You should be fine. Now let's get into this race, and I'll also explain turn one as well. So we're in the cursed position, and we've got some action up ahead. There's lots of little battling going on ahead. We've got Nico in the WRX, gets what's left inside here. There's a little bit of contact there. Oh, they've gone, they've gone. But into this corner, you're going to lift off a little bit, okay? You're going to be around 135 miles an hour into that corner to make it round. Keep that in mind, 135 miles an hour. Just lift off, do not break, otherwise you will understeer. Just lift off. Not sure what happened with Nico and the Portuguese driver there. We'll have a look in the bloopers at the end. But we're in P4 now, P4 for this race. We've got a chance of P1. We've got a chance of a victory. What's going on? In towards this pass. Right, we go. There we go. That's how you do that. Look at the speed we carried. Look at the speed. We're catching. We're catching. We're catching. This is what we want to do. We've got Konza, Zavisic, and uh, Bree up ahead. The cheese, of course. No, not the cheese. The player. In towards this right. And we go. Konza just nearly taps. Zavisic goes towards left inside. We get the inside of Konza. Got to leave Konza in Alfa Romeo size gap. He keeps that position for now. We pull back in. We have one and a half laps to go. Can we get this victory? That is the question. Question. Costa, no spoilers, please, if you're in chat. We continue on then down this straight, the back straight, in towards this left hander. Bill, Brian, Steve, wave me down for this brake marker. Third gear, we're looking for that tree. There it is. We start accelerating. Look at that. We make it beautifully. It's a perfect marker. Use it. As we continue towards the left hander, then the left, then right, in towards this braking zone, then and second gear. Remember, clip the curb on the inside if you can. Accelerate, and then we're going to go to third gear. We had no issues last time we clipped the curb, but unfortunately, the curb passes out and we spin! We spin! We bottle it! We are a bottle job now. I begin to accelerate, realize there's a car coming. I go into reverse. Now, I was meant to be in first gear here, but I was panicking. So I was trying to wheel spin around. I didn't, and actually, that was a bad return to track, I would say, but fortunately, I was ghosted, so, you know. All's not lost, but that's pretty bad return. But look at my damage. Oh, we bottled it, folks. We bottled it. Oh, no. What a bottle job. We've got engine damage. Everything's damaged apart from that right rear, apparently. That's not damage. Uh, but the curve just bounces off a little bit, and we should have stopped accelerating in the gravel. We had a chance of the victory, and we've lost out. As we see Dr. Kronos going for the, well, the overtake for P11. We're actually down in last position, technically, although a few people have retired from the race. So in towards turn one, let me explain this again. Get over to the right side, a little bit more, lift off, 135 miles an hour. Notice how I, I used the brake there and I started to understeer. Do not brake, just lift off, let the car carry momentum, and then head into this right-hander. And uh, here we go, Danny inside of Dr. Kronos. Also for that first corner as well, you can actually go a little bit on the throttle and it may actually help the car not understeer as much. Be careful of that. Danny Lupo has uh, got a penalty and I assume engine damage to back to the house. So they're going... But that is the end of the race. Oh, what a bottle job. We were there. Real, real bottle job. Fair play to the top three. Bree, Zavisic, and Consta. Right. That is it in terms of racing, but it's not over yet in this video because it's time to see some of the crashes. That's right. It's the bloopers. Let's start then with Sparks. Now, we did see Sparks backward entry. Now, I did say you got to break in a straight line, and this is why you've got to break in a straight line. It's going through here. Sparks understeers a little bit. There's a little bit of rotation in the car. Hits the brakes. Tries to count steer. Boom. Clips that sausage. And Sparks to the back. So that's what happened to Sparks. Nice to show you that Sparks. But we just... Nice to see what actually happened. Nice entry though with the reverse entry. Good to hear them. What happened to Jerry Artrick and all this? Oh, too deep into the old chicane. Oh, nasty with a the Greek there. Um, so, yeah. Jerry Artrick does survive without engine damage then. Comes into here. Oh, just understeers off. Into Barry. Oh, still no any... How have you got no en energy? Engine damage. It's not energy. We're not in some fantasy game here. I suppose it's at the back, isn't it? That's why. Uh, but my word, that is uh, some crashes in the heart. Sorry to see that, Jerry Archick. Again, big thank you for the support. Now, we've got a big crash here that Mario Sonic told me to look at here. It's going to this left-hander. got the Portuguese driver on the inside. Oh, double... Oh, hits it. Oh, sparks into the dawn. Oh, big crash. Big, big crash. Oh, the Spaniard dead into Sparks, which sends Mario around. That's a big crash. My word, that is a big crash. Yeah, look, that's the big one. That is the big one of today. So let's look at it from Mario Sonic's perspective then, coming into this left-hander. 
all by myself. All fine. He's a bit of uh, smoke in the distance. Oak takes one. Oak takes them. And smash by Sparks on the left rear. But that was because the Spaniard there, Danny, went straight into Sparks. That's what happened. A good sportsmanship hit from Mario Sonic in terms of, uh, yeah, avoiding the racing line. Now we have Nico. Now we did see this. It was a Nico and the Portuguese driver who... Maybe this is karma then, to be honest with you, with what happened versus the Don. I'm not too sure. Oh, there goes the Portuguese driver. That is another big, big off. Wow. That is it for this video, folks. Please do like it. Please subscribe to the channel. Stay in touch with all the latest content. But that is it from me. I just want to give a huge, huge shout out to Tink. She's a legend. I love you, Tink. I always will. Thank you so much for your help over the year. You are awesome and a legend. I say do give it a like on the way out. It is hugely appreciated. And yeah, au revoir, farewell, and goodbye.